What are you saying to yourself about yourself? Yes. Yes. I, 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 I'm just going to ask this question. What are you saying to yourself about who you are, what you have, why you are, and what you are? What, what are you saying to yourself? I'm not talking about what everybody is saying about you. What are you saying to yourself about your life condition? Amen. What are you saying to yourself because about your finances, your health, your mental and emotional stability, your environment? What are you saying to you? It doesn't matter so much after you've heard the word preach. It doesn't matter what everybody else is saying. Amen. What are you saying to yourself? What are you saying to yourself about relationships? What are you saying to yourself about personal relationships? How do you see yourself in personal relationships? What are you telling yourself supposed to happen in your personal relationships, your social relationships, your professional relationship? What is your mindset? What are you saying within? Are we here this morning? Because we can build or destroy in truth with words. My God, come on. I'm just going to talk to you all for half an hour, but we be simply here. Let's just talk about it. Let me say it again. We can build or destroy in truth, yeah. in the spirit. Because when a person is destroyed in the spirit, the Bible says a man's spirit will not be able to hold up his infirmity, but a, a sick spirit who can bear. Come on. Wow. Are you all talking to so I'm talking about, when I'm talking about the truth, Lawan, I'm talking about in spirit. Not what you're saying when people can hear you. Oh what you're saying, mm, you about our high. What you're saying when you're in that place by yourself, yes, sir. and life is dictating to you something other than what you've always believed. Come on. So what do you say to yourself? Because what you say to yourself determines the outcome of your action. <laughs> oh, y'all ain't here with me this morning. So I'm just gonna preach to myself. See, we have to become skillful in the word of righteousness. He said, strongly for those who become skillful in using the word. We have to learn and practice what and when and how to speak. Say it, Apostle. Say it. So many relationships are being destroyed because people are unskillful in the word. So many fellowships are being destroyed because people are unskillful in the word. I, I know you all don't like what I'm preaching, but it's still the truth. We have to become skillful in the word. When the Bible, the word for skillful means experienced. So you and I have to become experienced in using the word in all aspects of our life. Because when I use the words, see, let me tell you something. I learned this, and hear me when I tell you. The, the attacks of the enemy, they linger longer, and they have more effect when you're not skillful in the use of the word of righteousness. The reason why some of our relationships are in trouble is because we are unskillful. The reason why we are often discouraged, depressed, oppressed, in lack, in contentions, in disappointments, because we have, been, we have not been taught, we have not practiced. The use of the word. Because we practice it when everything is going good. Right. It's like when, when, like when if you go lift weights or something, you lift the weights until they start causing you pain. Come on, come on. But you can't really, the muscle don't tear down so it can grow back until it hurts. And many of us not apply the word and put the word on somebody else when things are going our way. Come on. But can you apply the word to your own life? Jesus. <laughs> See, well, let me, let, can we talk about words? I told you years ago that the U.S. government did, did a research on this. And when you speak words, they never die. They had a machine, um, 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 the machine that they could stick out like that and pull words back from years ago. Words are spirits, they never die. So when you release a word out your mouth, it never dies. You might try to run away from it, but it never dies. So in the word of truth, that word is up there working on your behalf. So based on who you're feeding, that's who's working for you. Y'all ain't saying that to me. Oh, God. The words, Aquinetta, are the sound that build things in the spirit. Can we talk here? Come on. Words are the sound. Watch this. Gondokai. Like I have a, hum, a hammer, right? You know, I grew up in, in the Bahamas, and they have all this electric stuff. But, you know, my brother-in-law was a carpenter, and I, I go to work with him sometimes. And they, they had these ha hammers. You know, remember the, those hammers? And they, everything was built with a hammer. But everything was also torn down by a hammer. Okay. Yeah. So when, if he would use a hammer, wow. he could tear something down. He could use a hammer to build something up. Yes. Yes. Wow. So words are as the hammer. Come on. The sound mm. of the hammer hitting the nail is building something or tearing something down. Yes, it is. Either nailing something in or pulling something out. Yes. So when you and I begin to use words, we got to understand that that's a spiritual hammer in our lives. We either tearing something down or we building something up. Y'all ain't saying nothing here. See, a thought can hardly become a reality without words. Come on. Wow. 
You can fake something. I'm going to talk to you about it two different ways in a minute. But until you say it, nobody know it. Yeah. You could think I'm ugly. But you can't damage me with that. It won't damage me anyways. Because I'm mature, too mature for that today. Somebody say amen. But for people who are not mature, you could call somebody ugly. You could think that, but if you don't say it, it'll never cause damage. Amen. See, you could have a nail, but if you don't put the nail, if you don't put the hammer on it, you ain't saying nothing. And then words become the hammer that we use to either build or tear something down. Are you here with me? I want you to say amen. amen. Remember now, everything, watch this now. When God moved on earth, he came out and word. But when he spoke, everything God did, he did with words. Amen. The hammer that he used to make manifest what you are in were words. Let there be light. Let the firmament move. Let the tree go back. He was only speaking. So the hammer that he was using to build this world that we in, that we supposed to enjoy, was only words. So you have to understand that if you're not skillful in the word, that's why Paul was saying we have to become skillful in the word of righteousness because if we're not skillful in the word, we'll destroy everything around us. Amen. Oh Amen. Yep. Are you all here with me right now? Because I, I heard a scripture, you know, that I was trying to not leave this for the end of the message, but I need to tell somebody. There's a scripture, I believe, in Proverbs uh, 7.21. It says that if you keep on, anybody who would keep, be, he said, be slow not to listen. Mm. Because if you keep listening, you can end up hearing what you don't want to hear. Jesus. Wow. Be careful. See, because you got to be careful who you're listening to so you know what to speak. Yes. Come on. Right there. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Right there. Uh, 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 let, let, let somebody find a scripture. Oh, I want to read it for somebody because I'm, I'm a little, yes. It's probably, oh, yes, what it said. I have it written now. Also take no heed unto all the words that are spoken, lest that thou hear thy servant curse thee. Basically, if you keep looking for everybody saying about you, eventually you hear something wrong. Oh. Be careful these people are always calling what they say or trying to find out everything. They can't, they can't never receive information without investigating it. Oh, Jesus. And then when they hear something that hurt their feelings, they get upset. Mm. Yeah. You heard that because you saw it out. Yes. Wow. Seeking shall find. That's good, Apostle. I know I'm preaching really good here. Some of us in here, we hear these things because we go seeking them out. Yeah. If you don't hear it, it can't affect you. Amen. Your son, you can't hear what they talked about you unless you go ask somebody. Because most of the times, if you don't have a, a gossip, people ain't going to tell you what they said. Come on now. But if you keep asking them eventually, they say, well, I'm going to tell you what they said. They say, you stink. <laughs> oh, what? Now, all of a sudden, if you're not mature, your feelings hurt. Yeah. But you are, now you have a, a problem with a person you got a fellowship with because you're going investigating. Come on. Be careful that you don't listen to all the words because eventually you hear something you don't want to hear. This is too good for y'all not to get it this morning. Somebody, Ecclesiastes 721. Amen. Ecclesiastes 721 says this. Let me read it again. Also take no heed unto all the words that are spoken. Don't try to find out what everybody's saying. Be concerned about what you're saying. Come on. Let God help us. Because your, 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 your destiny, life and death, is in the power of your tongue, not their tongue for you. Oh, thank you. So what's going to happen in your life will be based on what you say. That's why you all got stuck up. Oh, they curse you. Nobody can't curse you. Totally. Nobody can't curse whom God has blessed in the first place. Amen. So if you understand, they can say whatever they want to say. Y'all ain't talking back to me. But you need to understand that in your particular case, what you say is going to matter. Yes. Right there. The words are going to go they're going to form your life, you know. A lot of things that you live, if you want to be honest, a lot of things you're looking at right now are based on what you've been saying. Amen. Wow. But that's not that's not my message. I just want to, if we pay attention to everything, we'll eventually hear what we're listening for. The word of God is, is, is everything, and it begins everything God did begins with the word. Are we here together? So let me ask you again: What is your story? There are three words that you and I should use words. We should you choose wisely, speak from the heart, and speak your truth. Let me say it again. Because you would always believe what you confess to yourselves. That's right. Let me say it again. It's not so important, man. I'm telling you. If you and I, I got a tape this morning. One of the things I heard on it was this: If you still concerned about what people say, you ain't mature yet. Come on now, wow. come on. Because people gonna keep you always drawn away from your purpose and drawn away from your focus. Because if they know they can move you with their words, every time they want to get to you, they can say something to make sure you hear it. Amen. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Amen. And all of a sudden now you're living your life based on their word and not the word of God, not the word you're speaking to yourself. 
Are we here together? Yes. So let, let, let's, let's look at this lady. I want to look at this lady here for a minute. And I'm going to give you some, some, some points because I want us to really get this because your story has to be told. May I say that again? Your story has to be told. And when the Holy Spirit, when Holy Spirit came to live in you, He came to take you on this journey that your story has to be told. Are you listening to me this morning? Yes. So if your story got to be told, you got to be a partaker in this thing. The Bible says, it said, a word fitly spoken is like apples of gold and a pitch of silver. My God. My God. You can build somebody up or tear somebody down with words.